bowlers have to have something special. OK, let's change it over. A big heart and an ability to go through the pain barrier and obviously some genetics in there as well and uh, a very good work ethic to be, a, a, you know, a fast bowler that stays on the track for, for a long period of time. A fast bowler's heart rate can reach almost 190 beats per minute. They sprint at 21.6 kilometres, 13 and a half miles per hour for long periods of time. He's got to be quick, he's got to be agile, he's got to be flexible. So those sort of things are what you need in a fast bowler. And he needs to be able to sustain a, a pretty heavy impact. I mean, there's a lot of weight going down through as he jumps up and lands on the ground. So he needs to have a, a good strength base as well. It's an unnatural skill, and it puts abnormal demands on the body. Here at the Australian Institute of Sport, biomechanist Mark Portis works with the sporting elite. Biomechanics is the study of human movement. Mark uses this new technique to analyse fast bowling. We've used a classification criteria in research uh, just because it helps us determine what, is, what are the major problems for uh, back injuries in particular and trunk injuries in fast bowlers. There are two main types of fast bowling. Choose the wrong one and you risk serious injury. This is a side-on technique where the hips and shoulders are parallel to the line of flight of the ball. Then there's the front-on technique where the bowler faces the batsman. It was used by the great West Indian bowler Courtney Walsh to terrorise batsmen for 17 years. Where our problems are caused is uh, predominantly a variation of the front-on technique and that's where the bowlers don't maintain their front-on position through the whole delivery stride. And you can see here, this bowler here at back foot contact, the bowler is in a front-on position, i.e. chest is facing towards the uh, batter and so are the hips. Uh, but in between back foot contact and front foot contact, uh, these shoulders have counter-rotated, they've moved to a more side-on position. So you can see here, shoulders very front-on, here shoulders very side-on. And at this stage, the hips are tending to start to rotate towards the batter anyway. So you can see there's a twisting mechanism happening. The hips are going one way, shoulders are going the other way. To see how fast bowling can go wrong, Mark and a colleague cover a bowler with sensors which high-speed infrared cameras pick up. This is Jason Gulbin, an academic at the AIS who likes a game of cricket. Mark then uses computer software to create a digital model showing Jason's bowling action. Jason came in and tried hard for us, but uh, news isn't all good for Jason. He's what we call a side-on mixed technique. So he starts in the lower body um, side-on, but his upper body is front-on, but then it counter-rotates. And just to show you here, there's Jason's back foot contact, and you can see in his lower body, his pelvis there is quite side on to us, whereas he's quite front on in the shoulders. One saving grace Jason may have is that um, because he's starting in a side on position with his lower body, um, we seem to suspect that they don't seem to have as much torsion in their lumbar spine than the ones that are starting front on in lower and upper body. Others are not as lucky. At its best, Fast bowling is so energy demanding, it can destroy the body. Australian star Brett Lee is a very fast bowler. But five years ago, when he was only 20, his career seemed over. He broke his back. I think the reason why I probably got a sore back was the counter rotation. I mean, I'm no um, physiotherapist, but I thought that I had like a mixed action. And that comes down to uh, my bottom half was front on, my top half was side on, so I had all that, that counter rotation moving and um, yeah, just that sort of wear and tear, break my back basically. Brett turned to Mark for some scientific advice. Mark discovered that Brett had a contorted side on technique. His hips faced forwards, but he turned his shoulders, twisting his spine. A comparison with fellow Australian fast bowler Glenn McGrath showed just what a strain he was putting on his body. Glenn is a lot taller, but the two men's stride lengths are very similar. Brett keeps his legs straight. On impact, over five times his body weight goes through his knee joint. Glenn bends his knee to lessen this shock. 
we think you don't transfer as much of the energy into ball release and you lose ball release speed by flexing your front leg. Um, so there's a bit of a trade-off. You're probably saving your back a little bit and absorbing more shock in your limbs, your lower limbs, than your lower back. But you're probably not getting as much ball speed as you would because you don't get that lever and that whip effect, which is definitely what Brett gets. Brett's bowling is explosive, but he needed help from science to channel his power. Mark's advice helped Brett change to front on. He's also been on a rigorous training regime. I had to get the rehab going again. I did heaps of swimming, uh, heaps of stretching. I found that once I took the pressure off my hamstrings, um, it's taken heaps of pressure off my lower back and it starts to feel a lot better. Brett is now back to his best, bowling up to 156 kilometres, that's almost 100 miles an hour. Not every bowler has or wants this speed, but other bowlers use more subtle arts. As well as fast bowling, there is swing and spin. Swing is a strange phenomenon. The ball mysteriously arcs in mid-air. This is Australian Nathan Bracken, swing bowler for the New South Wales Blues, playing against the Queensland Bulls. Watch, as he bowls to his right, the ball swings to the left, in towards the batsman. Alex Tudor is a swing bowler with the English Academy. He's come to Australia to fulfil his dream of being a permanent fixture on the English team. Well, I've always wanted to play for England and I've been lucky enough where it's happened to me at an early age. I've been playing now for seven years and my aim now here is to get fit and, and, and to get myself back in England side, which I know will happen once my injuries are, are sorted out and um, that's really what, what drives me um, on in cricket. Alex explains how to swing. What I generally do and my team tries to do, what we're trying to do is shine one side of the ball, polish it. Uh, you may see cricketers on the TV, you know, get a f bit of saliva, put it all over the, um, one side of the ball and you can generally sometimes see when they're playing a cricket match that one, you know, their pants are very, very red and people always, you know, ladies sometimes always ask why they always polishing. What they do is, is trying to make the side very shiny. Generally you sort of tilt the seam towards the first slip and uh, you keep your wrist generally quite locked behind, um, keeping your thumb and hopefully you can see here on the side down the seam and it, what it does, it tends to see